You've probably noticed by the different backdrop and the large amount of road noise that I'm not at home. And that's because I am in fact on holiday, which is an absolute dream. The issue is, making this week's video is going to be rather tricky on account of the fact that I don't have all my tools with me. So for that reason, we're undertaking a smaller project. We're building a bike light comparable to this one, which costs $100. This bike light costing $100 does not really fit with my ideology on this channel. I'm always striving to create cheaper products. So we're going to be trying to do this as cheaply as possible, but I'm not setting a hard limit for the budget like I typically do. Being on holiday means that my resources are very limited, basically what I could fit in a single bag. So here's what I've brought with me. My soldering iron, some wrapping wire, this is the only wire I have, which is really annoying, but we're going to make it work. We have my box of my most commonly used electrical components that I keep on my desk, and some salt. The final thing unique to this project is this casing, and I 3D printed this at home so that I could use it on this project. The first step was to choose an LED, and I ended up settling for a 7 watt pre-soldered LED. Similar LEDs are available on Amazon and AliExpress, and I'll put a link to a couple in the video description. With the LED selected, it was time to move on to choosing a battery to power it. In the end, I selected a 21700 battery from LG with a 5000 mAh capacity. This should allow me to run the light for about two and a half hours before it runs flat. In order to charge and discharge this battery, I decided to use a 1S battery management system, which you would typically find in a power bank. The specific one I use, I use an awful lot in my videos and is available on AliExpress. I'll put a link in the video description. In order to charge and discharge this battery, I used a 1S BMS and charger that you would typically find in a power bank. These are available on AliExpress or similar websites for next to no money. I soldered this to my battery using the wrapping wire, which is not recommended because it will have a significantly higher resistance than a standard piece of wire due to it being so thin. But it's all I had. Now that I had a power supply sorted, I needed to work on some circuitry for the LED. So I first soldered two pieces of wrapping wire to the LED backing plate. In order to control the power to the LED, I needed a 4 ohm resistor, but I didn't have one powerful enough. So I soldered four in a two series, two parallel configuration in order to reduce the current going to each resistor and thereby reduce the heat. But a bike light's not much good without a switch. So I selected a suitable switch, or more accurately, I selected the only switch I had with me and we decided to use that for our switch. Unfortunately, it didn't fit in the hole in the body that I had made for it. So I used a soldering iron to cut the hole a little bit bigger. And you got an amazing view of that, thanks to my camera, which definitely didn't slip down at all while I was filming this. The last step was to put everything in the box and secure it in place. I didn't have any glue. So I used the tip of my soldering iron to kind of melt everything together, which worked pretty well. Although if you are following along at home, I would definitely recommend gluing this because it will look a lot nicer. And with the gluing done, I somehow warped the plastic so the switch is slightly out of position. But hey, we have a finished light and it doesn't look too bad. Let's test it. Ooh. 
this project worked really, really well. I'd say better than I was expecting. So, had a lot of fun, and until next week, see ya.